Hello everyone and welcome to my bar. My name is Ansel Birch, the Indecisionist, and I will be your dungeon barkeep today. Now, I am no expert mixologist, but like anyone tending bar in a cave, I am an adventurous spirit and I'm willing to try anything at least once. I've got a whole bar worth of supplies here, but no call list or menu, so what do you say? We'll just make up a cocktail as we go along, using the roll of some gaming dice and my willingness to, uh, you know, subject myself to a small amount of torture for your enjoyment. And I tell you what, if it's any good, I'll let you know and you can try it yourself. What do you say? Sound like a plan? Great. All right, well, first up, we need to get out our gaming dice, and uh, I happen to have a set right here. Um, so let's go ahead and roll for the first thing we're gonna put into our cocktail. These are the essentials. Uh, you're gonna need some kind of liqueur or cream. We'll probably need a mixer and we might want some juice. Uh, and so here on this chart, we're gonna pick one of those things to go into today's cocktail. Uh, do, do, do. Okay, we got a two on that die. Uh, two is a mixer. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and move to the mixers chart. Here we go. We're gonna roll a d8 to pick a mixer off of this chart. And I've got it right here. All right, that is a seven. So we'll be using Saucy Wench Bloody Mary mix today. Uh, very exciting stuff. A friend of the show makes this and you can get it at a lot of your local Renaissance fairs. Check out SaucyWenchHotSauce.com to get yourself some Saucy Wench hot sauce, uh, Bloody Mary mix, and condiments. Lots of, lots of great stuff coming from a great company. So check that out. The next thing we're gonna do is roll a D6 and this D6 is going to choose a garnish to go in our cocktail. All right, that is a three. So this is gonna be olives, Bloody Mary mix, and something. We can't very well make a cocktail without some liquor. So the next thing up is gonna be our D10 to choose a liquor off of this chart. So here we go, let's go ahead and roll that D10. All right, we got a 10. 10s explode on this show, so we're gonna roll that two more times and put two kinds of liquor into today's cocktail. So let's go ahead and reclaim that. Here we go. We got a nine, so vodka, and a one, so something flavored. All right, so um, the things that I have flavored versions of are all over this list. So let's go ahead and put it up to a vote in our live chat during the live taping of today's show. So uh, those of you at home, go ahead and let me know, what, what do you wanna see? La, uh, do you wanna see flavored gin or flavored whiskey go into today's cocktail, along with vodka, vermouth, and Bloody Mary mix? Let me know. Uh, that being said, that is uh, the end of that section. Next, we're gonna move on to some bar terms. This is a little pop quiz for me to see if I can prove to you that I know anything about actual bartending uh, through uh, some bartender terminology. So let's go ahead and roll that. That's a nine jigger. All right, this is a jigger. Uh, I have a pile of them because I like being able to measure in a number of different ways and once you start doing something like this, people just end up giving you jiggers. Um, but yeah, so a jigger allows us to measure in fractions of an ounce, uh, which is really nice. Uh, this one goes to uh, one ounce and two ounce and it's got little graduations on the inside that you can't really see on the camera. Uh, you can see that line there for one and a half. And there's, I think, another one farther down. But yeah, so jiggers are these little measuring devices that you see bartenders use. Uh, they allow us to measure in small quantities, which is important when you're making a three ounce drink that's gotta have eight ingredients in it. That sometimes is the case. All right, so that's our bar term for today, jigger. Uh, and we'll go ahead and move on to the last thing we need to do, which is name this drink. What are we gonna call this monstrosity? I have a list of names right here. Ooh, yeah, probably works better if I use this hand. I have a list of names right here. Ah, these names are suggested by people just like you, random people on the internet who filled out a form or answered me on social media. And I have hundreds of these, but the list is starting to get low. So if you've got an idea for a cocktail name that you'd like to suggest, head on over to indecisionist.com slash dungeon barkeep. You can fill out the form there to put your suggestions in. They'll join the others in our big list and get selected at random to be a part of the list you see here. Uh, and this is gonna be chosen by everybody's favorite, the D20. That is a 17. Adventure starter, all one word. All right, 
the adventure starter. That's exciting. All right. We're going to go ahead and build today's cocktail in the glass. So we're going to go ahead and use one of these guys. We are using two kinds of liquor today, vodka and peanut butter whiskey, as selected by the folks in our live stream. So I'm going to do, to start, I'm going to do one ounce of peanut butter whiskey and one ounce of vodka. Two ounces is a pretty standard pour. Uh, so I don't want to break too far from tradition with that. But I have forgotten, of course, an important first step. This glass needs ice, and we're going to go ahead with skull ice, because I have a feeling this is going to be an absolute nightmare for me. Here we go. There's our peanut butter whiskey. There's our vodka. Now we need to add in some vermouth. I have a feeling this vermouth isn't going to get to do much, so I'm going to give it a full ounce. And all that's left is to top this off with Bloody Mary mix. Does this feel a little bit like a crime? Yes. Hopefully I will get away with it. It's extra gross when you haven't mixed it yet. So we'll go ahead and stir this and hopefully that will improve its general demeanor. May have been one skull too many. Unless I can get both of them to face up, that would be that would be cool. There we go. Two skulls up. Um, yeah, okay. That's that's definitely a crime. So there we go. Two skulls. Alright, so here we have the adventure starter. Two skulls looking me in the face. Okay. Oh. Oh. Oh, okay. This is an assault um, to my face. Uh, what can I say about this? Um, immediately you get like a, a fruity note and a, a really a kind of pleasant fruity note, which I, I have to assume is a combination of the sweetness of the whiskey liqueur, which is... Uh, the peanut butter whiskey is really more of a peanut butter liqueur with a whiskey base than it is a whiskey whiskey. Um, but regardless, it is it does have a sweetness and it does have a sort of, um, I don't know. Uh, it, there's almost a peanut butter and jelly quality to it, even without adding other fruit flavors. And then I think the vermouth is probably also helping with that because we gave it a nice dose of vermouth. So it's getting that like grapey whininess to it. Um, so that's not unpleasant at first. But then when you, when you go to swallow it, it's as though the, it's as though it's separating in your mouth and the fruitiness leaves first. And as it departs, you get the the Bloody Mary mix, which is fabulous, but a, a stark, stark change from the fruitiness that you're getting. So as it develops, as you're letting it move around, that that like tomatoey, spicy, celery ness uh, goes away, or, or sorry, shows up, uh, and uh, and it's. Like I said, it's a it's a stark contrast to the like fruity sweetness of what you start with uh, as you as you first take your your sip here. Um, is there a place for this? I feel like I feel like there are some folks out there who would drink this on purpose, probably as part of like a 
as was said in the in the live chat during our taping here today, probably as like a family hangover cure, a hair of the dog style thing, or um, you know maybe even as like a traditional beverage. Maybe this is something that your you know your ancestors drank because they didn't have any other options, or somebody did it once and it became a thing, or a bet got out of hand. Um, a uh, quilting dancer who's watching live asks if it makes you want to punch whoever made it. Um, I wouldn't go so far as that. It would make you, uh, curious for that person's well-being. Um, but I don't, I don't know that you would want to punch them necessarily. It's not a, it's not an act of, of uh, anger towards you. But it is a, a misguided choice, I think is the best way to put it. I will say the more I'm drinking it, the more I'm, I'm coming to terms with it. Um, if you drink it quickly as opposed to letting it sit and trying to taste all of the notes, it sort of all becomes one thing. And uh, it's at that point like a, a tomatoey, um, celery thing with a, a sweet brightness to it. Uh, and I don't hate that. So uh, this might be a good shooter as a result. You know, you could, you could line up a row of glasses of this and... Uh, let everybody get a snoot full of peanut bloody Mary vermouthness uh, with some vodka to proof it up. Yeah, I could see this being a thing that somebody, you know, you make a you make one of these in a shaker and then you you lay out a line of them for everybody in a party or something. Call it the the bloody handshake or you know whatever. Um which makes sense since it's an adventure starter. Maybe the adventure starter is everybody gets one of these in a shot uh, and you, you all hit the shot and, uh, and then go woo and then run out the door to go fight the goblins or, uh, you know, remove the king from power or, uh, you know, give the kobolds that live nearby what for. Um, <clears throat> yeah, 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 yeah. So... The adventure starter. What do I think of it? It's okay. Not good, but I can definitely see where somebody would, would drink it. Um, so the last thing we like to do here on the show is think of an adventure that this would fit into. What kind of adventure would you insert this cocktail into? Uh, and honestly, I mean, adventure starter is, it's right there in the name. This is not something that is tied necessarily to your adventure specifically, but to the part of the adventure wherein you are beginning. Uh, and I think that just like we talked about a second ago, putting it in the bar as something that, you know, you've, you've met with the, the dark shadowy figure in the corner who's lit only by his own pipe. Uh, you've, you've asked all the questions you could ask. You've checked around for anybody in the bar who might be able to give you help. Maybe you even took a quick trip out to the local general store to get uh, supplies and you've come back to the pub to say, all right, we're going on this adventure and get your, your map updated or whatever. And then the bartender lays a line of these out. Everybody in the party throws it back. You all go, woo, and everybody's out. Uh, the entire party, you know, has, uh, you know, a, a, a extra energy, the extra drive to get out of there and do something other than drink more of this, because why would you want to do that? Um, and I think there's also something to be said for having something like that as a transitional moment. And this is, um, I'll get a little meta on this. Uh, I run a lot of one shots as part of TTRPG Pickup Con. And one of the big challenges a lot of the times is how do you transition from the uh, initial scene where you've introduced a whole bunch of stuff. You've given them an entire setting. You've given them a, a whole cast of characters that they may or may not need to keep track of. And now you need to get them out of that place and into the adventure because you've only got a few hours to get through the story. What is that transitional moment? And I'm starting to think that maybe a traditional cocktail or a traditional shot that is part of your adventure setting can be exactly that. You know, the the tavern keep lays out this line of drinks. Everybody in the in the party, you know, they either drink it or they don't drink it, but that moment 
where they've uh, made that decision and thrown it back, um, that's where you transition. And we come in, you know, a few hours later, you've walked for a while, and now you're at the outside of the the kobold warrens or the uh, the cave where the banshee lives or, you know, whatever. Uh, so I think that that's, that's going to be my answer to where does this belong in an, in an adventure. It belongs at the beginning of the adventure, and it belongs in, in any tavern anywhere in the world. It's got stuff that grows in lots of places, um, you know, depending on what your technology level is and your globalization level. Tomatoes, obviously, are going to be a thing, but... Um, you can make vodka out of just about anything. Um, a weird sweet liqueur. Everybody's got their own weird sweet liqueur. Not a problem. Uh, I don't think the vermouth is essential to this. I think any kind of like sweet uh, fermented beverage would probably do similarly. So like a wine, a mead, uh, cachaca, something like that um, would absolutely work. Um, and so with that, friends i i thank you for joining me here today uh i hope you had a good time if you did enjoy today's show like comment subscribe all the things that youtubers tell you to do and until next time drink adventurously